might be dead in there. Continue, please. Experiment requires that you continue, please. 330 volts. The experiments that Milgram and others conducted were controversial and, for ethical reasons, may never be conducted again. Yet, the results of those experiments remain groundbreaking and increasingly relevant to contemporary life. In 1962, Stanley Milgram shocked the world with his study on obedience. To test his theories, he invented an electronic box that would become a window into human cruelty. In ascending order, a row of buttons marked the amount of voltage one person would inflict upon another. Milgram's original motive for the experiment was to understand the unthinkable how the German people could permit the extermination of the Jews. When I learn of incidents such as the massacre of millions of men, women, and children perpetrated by the Nazis in World War II, how is it possible, I ask myself, that ordinary people who are courteous and decent in everyday life can act callously, inhumanely, without any limitations of conscience? Now, there are some studies in my discipline, social psychology, that seem to provide a clue to this question. The problem I wanted to study was a little different. It went a little bit further. It was the issue of authority. Under what conditions would a person obey authority who commanded actions that went against conscience? These are exactly the questions that I wanted to investigate at Yale University. It is May 1962. An experiment is being conducted in the Elegant Interaction Laboratory at Yale University. The subjects are 40 males between the ages of 20 and 50 residing in the greater New Haven area. Psychologists have developed several theories to explain how people learn. One theory is that people learn things correctly whenever they get punished for making a mistake. Forty years later, Milgram's infamous experiment, Obedience, is still taught in classrooms around the world. Would you roll up your right sleeve, please? This electrode is connected to the shock generator in the next room. And this electrode paste is to provide a good contact to avoid any blister or burn. Do you have any questions now before we go into the next room? About two years ago, I was at the Veterans Hospital in West Haven. Mm -hmm. And while there, they detected a heart condition. There's nothing serious, but as long as I'm having these shocks, uh, how strong are they? How dangerous are they? Well, no, although they may be painful, they're not dangerous. Mm -hmm. Anything else? No, that's all. All right, teacher, would you take the test and be seated in front of the shock generator, please, in the next room? But the experiment was rigged. The victim was an accomplice of the experimenter. The victim, according to plan, provided many wrong answers. His verbal responses were standardized on tape, and each protest was coordinated to a particular voltage level on the shock generator. Now, as teacher, you were seated in front of this impressive-looking instrument, the shock generator. Its essential feature is a line of switches that goes from 15 volts to 450 volts and a set of verbal designations that goes from slight shock to moderate shock, strong shock, very strong shock, intense shock, extreme intensity shock, and finally XXX, danger severe shock. Your job, the experimenter explains to you, is to teach the learner a simple word pair test. If he gets each answer correctly, fine, you move on to the next pair. But if he makes a mistake, you were instructed to give him an electric shock, starting with 15 volts. And you increase the shock one step on each error. Incorrect. You'll now get a shock of 105 volts. Hard hit. Just how far can you go in this thing? As far as is necessary. What do you mean, as far as is necessary? To complete the test. Incorrect. 150 volts. Oh. Sad face. That's all. Get me out of here. I told you I had heart trouble. My heart's starting to bother me now. Wrong. It's hair. 75 volts, Jim. Oh. <laughs> you don't know that. Please continue. Some psychologists were troubled by the ethics of it. Many, if not most subjects, found it a highly stressful, conflicted experience. 
people are stammering, stuttering, laughing hysterically and appropriately. 150 volts. Experimenter, that's all. Get me out of here. Please. Oh, my heart's starting to bother me now. Get me out of here, please. Let me out of here. You have no right to keep me here. Let me out. Let me out of here. Let me out. Continue, please. Let me out of here. My heart's bothering me. Let Go me on. Out. Let me out. This will be at 3.30. According to Milgram, one of the things that's a prerequisite for carrying out acts that are evil is to shed responsibility from your shoulders and, and hand it over to the person in charge. You're going to get a shot. 180 volts. Oh, I can't stand the pain. Let me out of here. I'm not going to kill that man in there. I mean, who's going to take the responsibility if anything happens to that gentleman? I'm responsible for anything that happens here. Continue, please. All right, next one. Slow. Walk, dance, truck, music. Two-thirds of volunteers were prepared to administer a potentially fatal electric shock when encouraged to do so by what they perceived as a legitimate authority figure. In this case, a man in a white coat. 375 volts. I think something's happened to that fall in there. I don't get no answer. He was hollering a less voltage. Can't you check in to see if he's all right, please? Milgram's findings horrified America. They showed that decent American citizens were as capable of committing acts against their conscience as the Germans had been under the Nazis. He didn't hold any gun to anybody's head. Just the fact that he conveyed a sense of authority. Roughly 60, 65 percent of the people went all the way to the top of the shock board. 450 volts. That's it. Now continue using the last switch on the board, please. The 450 switch for each wrong answer. Continue, please. I'm not getting no answer. Don't the man's help mean anything? Whether the learner likes it or not, we but must... But he might be dead in there. Well, who was actually pushing the switch? I was. But he kept insisting. I told him no, but he said he got to keep going. What kind of obedience would Milgram get today if he were to do the experiment today? Probably about the same. Probably about the same. Why? I don't know. I think people are just inherently obedient. It just really shows like how far human beings will go to appease what they perceive to be an authority figure. Milgram has identified one of the constants, one of the universals of social behavior. The readiness to obey authority cuts across time. It's a constant. In the experiment you just saw, two-thirds of all ordinary people who were participants went all the way, went to 450 volts. When it got to 375 volts, the guy was screaming, and then there was a thud, there was silence. And he could be dead or he could be unconscious. So if you were doing critical thinking, if you were that teacher, in that, uh, the, the mock teacher in that study, you should have said, it doesn't make sense for me to keep shocking. How could I be improving his memory if he's unconscious or worse if he's dead? But nobody asked that question. They were trapped in the power of that situation. But I said, Milgram ran a thousand person, people. This was only one study. He actually did 19 different experiments. In each one, he varied one aspect of the social situation. And in some studies, he got conformity, compliance, obedience up to 90%. The study has been repeated, replicated many times in many different countries with the same effect. <laughs>